lives. So some people are going through so many divorces, their heart is so broken, their heart is unhealthy, and they're not going to have an easy time when they meet the person that God has called them for. That's right, I'm talking to you too. It don't matter to me how old you are. No sex. Jesus first. Dude, and when Jesus is first, man, he's going to bring you that lady. Yeah, I know. She'll be hot. But just think when you get to the house of God together and you can't wait to get there together and you lift your hands together and you start worshiping together and you get home and you pray together and and you talk about Jesus together. Dude, I'm telling you, your life is going to be full. I'm not not just talking like it's going to be some religious thing. I'm talking you're going to have a great spiritual relationship with your new bride. But, dude, you got to wait. I'm talking like you you got to meet the woman that loves Jesus more than she loves you. Don't get the desperate ones. And don't give me that nasty smile. This is all about you and I being whole people in Jesus. And when Jesus is not your main squeeze, you're going to get squeezed. Now, in my family, my dad had walked. I'm going to tell some family secrets. In my home, my dad walked away from God in his 38th year of living. Now, I grew up in church, on the pew, under the pew. I pewed in the church. I'm talking like I used to play, play matchbox cars in the church. I heard my name from the pulpit more than most people ever thought about it. The preacher would stop his sermon and go, Michael, stop that. When I, when I used to pass gas in the church, I would wait. Listen now. I would, it was hard wooden pews. I would wait for the pastor to have a pause. I have one earlobe longer than the other because my uncle (laughs) was the usher, and he'd come down, (laughs) and he'd drag me to the back. But when my dad stopped serving God, it created spiritual warfare within our house. No longer was it we were going to the house of God as a family, but now there was a difficulty because he didn't love Jesus anymore at that point. He was hurt and something happened in his life and he was rebelling against God. So now anything to do with God created problems with those who wanted God. And there was a spiritual, my mom said the quietest, the only time she could really pray in my house was like at 3 a.m. when he was sleeping. Young men and young women, Jesus is explicit in the word. Do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You are not biblically allowed. Don't tell me what to do. Someone's got to. The Bible declares that you should not be dating somebody that does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And the reason is, is because we don't just live in a natural world. We live in a spiritual world. So what happens is after you get married, when you decide to get right, if you weren't, and when you want to bring your kids up in the kingdom, or it could be the opposite, male or female, you've got a spiritual warfare in your house. Let me tell you something. If you have experienced that, it is not fun. So I want to encourage you. As single people, God has a phenomenal plan for your life. Don't settle. Don't settle. You are too important to settle. God has something and someone great for your life, but if you settle, how can he bring them to you? If I had married the girl that I was with in Bible college, I would not be where I am today in ministry. She was the best preacher in our class, female. She was a great singer in our class. She traveled with the drama team in our class. 
She got great grades. Her daddy was a preacher. But if I'd have married her, I wouldn't be where I am today. And neither would you. The fact is, is that every one of our lives affects somebody else's. And when we settle, what we're doing is this. Is we're not going to be able to go to the finality of greatness. You're struggling. Now, it's not that God can't use your life. I'm not saying that. But if you have a choice to struggle or to do it well, which one would you rather do? How many would rather have strife in your home or peace in your home? What happens when you marry somebody that's not born again? You are putting yourself in a position where you're going to have strife. Now, I know that there are probably unsaved men or women in here with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and you're saying, don't listen to him. Listen to me. I've seen as many divorces as I've seen marriages. I've seen more broken hearts than I've seen people that are healthy. And it's because preachers don't want to talk about this because they'll offend you. I'm here to offend you. I'm here to make you uncomfortable and make you question the dating relationship that you're in or that you're willing to start. If Jesus is not number one in their life, they can be your friend, but they should never be your boyfriend or girlfriend. Jesus must be number one. Say amen or oh my. Oh my. And baby, men and women, single men and women of God, be smart enough to know when to run. Well, I've got all these years invested. If you are not married, you're not bound. Save your life, babe. God's got great plans. Don't settle. Do not settle. Shout it out loud with me. Do not settle. Come on, shout it out loud. Do not settle. Say it out loud. I will not settle. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for your word. For your word is very practical. Father, the world is looking for love in all the wrong places. Father, I pray that you will raise up men and young men and women of God in this house that are single. Lord, I pray for those who have been divorced after many years and now are back on the market again. Father, I pray for them to have wisdom that they won't settle for somebody that just comes down the pike. But, Lord, they will not sit back and be satisfied until, Jesus, they bring you bring that one who loves them, you, you more than them. Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that your children will not be diverted from you. And Lord, I pray for that lonely sensation that they get every once in a while. Father, I pray they take it from being a negative emotion to being positive. That Jesus, that lonely sensation will drive them closer to you. will even be the, the beckoning call to spend more time. Jesus, the love that they have that they want to spend, Lord, I pray they'll get hooked into a ministry at this house that they can love people. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Father, I pray that you'll grow up a bunch of very successful singles that will enter into the marriage covenant, that will be a couple, God, that everybody will stand around and say, I want a marriage just like theirs. Father, I pray that they make you number one first before they ever start looking. In Jesus' name.